Yeah. Rod and I leave for Indiana tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Indiana? We'll get back at Monday. Where? Where in Indiana? Oh. Um, Madison, oh. which is right on the Ohio River. So, yes, my sister in law texted me this morning. She goes, One more sleep. I'm like, I know. Oh, you know what? One more sleep. I love that. One more sleep always counts the days. One more sleep. One more sleep. That's how we keep you here. Two more sleep. <laughs> I love the Yay! More no more screams! Oh, I love that. Get ups. That's great, too. Because oh, it's like, I have to wake up morning. <laughs> okay, let's pray, ladies and gents. Father, thank you again so much for your word and um, just the treasures that it holds within. Thank you so much for the students here that have been faithful to come. And I just pray for those that are still traveling. Uh, those with sick children and those that are sick themselves, I just pray that uh, your healing touch would be upon them. In your precious name we pray, amen. amen. And travel safe. And travel safe, yes. Okay, I'm going to review. Um, hey, that's not right. I pulled up the wrong one. I'm like, wait, I'm not on Philadelphia. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, I'm going to have to edit. It's nice to be there. He's going to love that. Go edit the video. I don't think you did it right. I didn't. You're wrong. There we go. No, I think she did. I did. Yes, you do. What should I do? The, the rose is that right? There we go. Oh, she looks really good. Okay. Because I'm just thinking that Chad's going to do religious studies. I'm like, you don't for him. Hello. Yay. Okay. Review. This is not a quiz. Uh oh. Um, but <laughs> Jesus is in the midst of the churches, right? Yeah. Okay, so Ephesus. What's their problem? They lost their first love. Right. They lost their first love, so they are in the danger of losing their salvation? No. No, their church. Their church. Okay, then we went to who? Smyrna. Smyrna. What's wrong with them? Nothing. Nothing! You're wrong! Hey! Suffering that was called to be faithful unto death. There is no reproof for this church. Then who do we go to? Uh -oh. Sardis. 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 Isn't somebody, somebody's before that. Two Pergamum. people are before that. Pergamum. Pergamum. What's wrong with Pergamum? <laughs> they have a teaching of Balaam. Right. Balaam, Balak. Immorality. Right. Immorality. And they are tolerating it. Yeah. Okay. So they live in the midst of the false teaching and where Satan's throne was. Let me go to... No, that one more. Thyatira. Thyatira, right? They tolerated false teaching and sin. They have the yes and Jezebel. And they have Jezebel. This, you don't get a good fuzzy feeling when you talk about Thyatira. Yeah, when you hear Jezebel, it's like, not good? Okay, Louise, now who do we have? Sardis. Sardis. <laughs> And do we get a fuzzy feeling with Sardis? No, 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 no. God said you are dead. They're just dead. But they think they're alive. They have a name that they're alive, but they're dead. Okay? Then we go to Philadelphia. We always think Philadelphia means brotherly love. Okay? Philadelphia, they're kind of similar to Smyrna, right? They have love. They were keeping his word. They were enduring. Yeah. And now we go to Laodicea. Yeah. What did you learn about Laodicea in your history, in that little blurb that she gave you about what they were? What did you find out? They were wealthy. Mm. Mm -hmm. So they were independent of God. Yes. Perfect, you know, uh, condensed version. They were wealthy, so they were independent of God. Okay? They went through the motions. They did. But. 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 Right. They got their water. <laughs> from. From. from two, they had no independent water source. Yeah. 
Now that's dead. Yeah. No water, you're dead. Okay, so what I read about that, which was really interesting because cold water came from 10 miles away. Colossi, Hot water came from six miles away, or I might have exactly. that. Exactly. But yeah. by the time the water reached them, <laughs> it was lukewarm. <laughs> and they How were okay with that. How appropriate. I know, and they were okay with that. Yeah. Just like that to me, I'm like, and they're like, it's okay, it's lukewarm. I was like, I can call and go, and you know, something's wrong with my water. It just yeah. can't get cold, it can't get hot, it's just bleh. They were used to lukewarm. The church was lukewarm too. That's what I'm well, saying. Yeah. That's so appropriate. Okay, um, the wealthiest city. Why? They had the black wool. They had the black wool. I saw. I saw. Banking was, was a huge. major commerce yeah. in there. Okay. Um, uh, the church was the result. That was interesting of Epaphras spreading uh -huh. the gospel in the area. We learned that in Colossians. That's how the church started up. Well, okay, who um, ministered or was the mentor to Epaphras? Paul. 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 Right. So Paul's got an interest in this church too, but Paul's dead by now because this is AD. Right. AD what? This is like ninety-five. Ninety-five. Right? That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, medical school. Mm. They had a medical school there. What were they famous for in the medical school? The ISAC. ISAC. Mm. Just crazy. <laughs> Just crazy. They And then God says they need ISAV. It's like, but we have ISAV. We're the world's production of ISAV. People come here for our ISAV. Okay, that's not what we're talking about, is it? Okay. Um... We have a description of Jesus. How does he start out? Let's read um, verses 14 to 22. <laughs> to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you, buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may become rich, and white garments so that you may clothe yourself, and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed, and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. How is Jesus defined? Amen. The Amen. And faithful and true. That's <sighs> that's faithful so and true. Important, it true is. The, telling the truth. <laughs> Which they didn't have. They thought this, all of this, and it was all not true. They thought they were wealthy. They had the, blonde, the salve. They, they had the lukewarm water. Which they were okay. No. All of that is not okay. Means amen means sure or truly. This was interesting in Zodiades. It confirms the preceding words and invokes their fulfillment. Okay, to all the preceding words I took as Revelation one through three, because he's now the amen. I mean, what do we say at the end of our sentence when we agree with something? Amen. Preacher says something, we're like, Amen, brother. That's good. What does that mean? So be it. So be it, because why? It's true. <coughs> He's speaking truth, and now Jesus is? Amen. Alpha and Omega. Omega. Done. Amen. So, Jenny, that definition, though, I got is after Jesus' time is where we started using the amen. And that was at yes. the end. Jesus used it in the beginning of most of his yes. discourses. Truly, truly. Truly, truly. Right. Isn't that interesting? That's a good point. 
That is but a good that, point. But then he did not say I'm coming. He said the door was open. Isn't that interesting yeah, too? It doesn't say I'm coming quickly or do this. Yeah. Knocking. Okay. What else? He said he was. Jesus is the opposite of what the people mm-hmm. in church were, as in true, the faithful and true witness. Okay, the definition, one who has information or knowledge of something and can bring to light. Okay, why do we have witnesses in a courtroom? To shed light on them. To shed light on it. Okay, true. and what do they say? Oh, that's hearsay. What does that mean? They heard about it. They didn't see it. They didn't see it. They heard about it from someone else. So they're witness of what they heard, but they're not a witness of what they saw. They're not a, what is it? My book called an eyewitness or an ear witness. An ear witness. Ear. Oh, that's it. that's what they are, right? They're an ear witness, which you'd much rather have an eyewitness. Okay, someone that can say, "I saw that." How important is it when you have an accident and someone actually stops and goes, oh, yeah. "If you need somebody to say this, what?" Thank you, because otherwise it's he said, she said. This is what I'm going to tell the police officer. This is what she's going to. Mm-hmm. Hopefully the evidence is going to show that I'm telling the truth, but maybe it won't. But this person that saw it gives affirmation, makes it even more true, okay? He is the faithful witness. Why is that important that he's the faithful witness? You can rely on him. You can rely on him. Do his words change? Time after time. No. 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 He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many TV shows have you watched or even been in a courtroom where they've taken the witness and stuff and they're going to say that and then they get up on there and they don't quite say what they said there. You're like, uh-oh. There goes your whole case. It was based on... That's not going to happen. He's faithful and true witness. Okay? We... Did you wonder why she had you kept looking for the witness and looking for this and why would we keep looking up that. This is giving him um, authority, credentials, that he, he is the witness in case you wonder what's so important about that. He is the faithful witness and let me show you how he is and is the authority of being the faithful witness. In John 1.18, it says he explained the Father. How can he possibly explain the Father? Because he's an eyewitness. Because he's an eyewitness. <coughs> That's what you need. How many times in John did he say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? Well, that can't be because we haven't seen the Father. But I have. I've lived with him. I dwell with him. That is where I live. I'm only here but he was, he has no beginning, he has no end, so he's always been with the Father. Okay, John 14. What did you find out there? Um, you want a homework page? It's 81. 81, thank you. Who has seen Jesus has seen the Father? He's the Father. As the Father is in him. Now, how would, they, how would they even understand that? The Father was in him. How do they get that? I don't know, but it was like super. I don't the whole idea of him being in the middle of the lampstands, you know, and and well, then we did the one. With the, I I was doing t- one of the past ones that I skipped at the same time, so I. That's always good. Me if though, I'm a little you know? confused between which one was which, <laughs> <laughs> but the one we, we were talking about the Holy Spirit and the eyes, and then mm-hmm. with this about him dwelling in God and then I mean it's just I just got this awe of how it all works and how he's in everything but because God is in everything yes. and and he's seeing everything and it, it's just I, 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 I sat there and laughed because it's yes. just overwhelming it is it's just amazing and then he's in the middle amazing. of those land. He he's in the middle of it, yes. and he's seeing it, and he's communing with God, and right. and it's it's and still just, communes with me. I, I don't know how else you could be like for you know you would be wordless. Um. Yes, yes. I hope we all at, at some point do that in our study. We just kind of have to put it down and go. Right. 
Wow. But the Hebrew, he tells us that he's the exact image of God. Yeah, he's the exact representation of God. Yes. Therefore, if you've seen me, you've you seen the Father. Right. And that's where I have I have problems. Uh, I have no problem <clears throat> seeing Jesus as a human on earth. Right. But when he rises to heaven, yes. I can't. I have trouble separating me too. him and God. To me, there, it's just there one. One, one, one but yet he's right. seated it. Exactly. Right and then he says How he sits with them on the throne same. when he's like, you know, mm -hmm. you're coming because I sat on my father's so it's like, yeah. I guess you just have to say our minds cannot comprehend. No. no. It's just the vastness. The, the absolute yes. vastness. It's so uncomprehendable. Yeah. It's Which just, makes me feel for John trying to put it in Like, yeah, that, I was trying to say that, that we for would understand. Kids. Like, they, when they're explaining things, they're explaining things in only the words that they have. Right. Which is just finite. It's not enough. Right. Yeah. They're inadequate to I describe that. I sympathize with, with uh, when that Paul that said he saw things that were unthinkable. Right, right. Things. And he just he couldn't he couldn't write them down because there was no way. Every time he'd go, it, it just wouldn't make sense. No so I can't describe that. Yeah. Exactly. John five and eight. Boy, I wish I could say this. Be I, I wish I could say this. It is not true, yeah. not true, not true, not true of me. But Jesus said he spoke the Father's words. And he did nothing out of his own initiative. So it was never something, oh, I think I'll do this. No. Mm -hmm. The Father wants me to do this, so this is what I do. Right. This was his whole reason for being here. So he did nothing on his own initiative. Everything was. This is what the Father has. This is my whole purpose in life on earth. All right? My earthly life, this is the whole purpose, so this is what I do. Everything was orchestrated, and he did everything he was supposed to do. When you wait to Revelation 19, 9 and 11, why is this important? True. That's true. Come to truth, the truth. Right. He's the amen. He's, He's the yeah. faithful and true. true witness. You don't want a witness that's going to get up there and lie. And how important for us always be truthful, even... Right. The littlest thing. Even the littlest thing, and when it's really not convenient yes. to tell the truth. Yeah. Well, how often have we read <clears throat> in Scripture where they have come to the judge yes. and there has been false witnesses? False witness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, what, what put Christ on the cross? Exactly. False witness. Mm -hmm. True words of God. I want you to remember you can take people to Revelation. I mean the end of the book. We're not at Genesis. We're at the end of the book going, these are, what these are. All from Genesis to Revelation. These are the true words of God. Well, how do you know it's true? It's true. And Jesus is the faithful and true witness. These words are faithful and true. He himself, I mean, as a little kid, that's one of the John 14, 1 through 6. We memorized that, memorized in elementary school. I am the way, the truth, truth the life, not a, possibly, maybe, <laughs> the. Yes. He is the truth. Not only that he speaks the truth, he represents the truth. He is the living being truth. That was in your homework. I still think page 81, right? Correct? Yes. Okay. okay. <clears throat> he also said he's the beginning of the creation of God. What did you understand when you looked up that word? <clears throat> that was, that, I thought that was pretty interesting. The beginning? The beginning. The source. The source. The source or origin. Okay. That by which anything begins to be. Isn't that, say that again. Anything. That by which anything begins to be. Anything. That's fine. Again, we can't comprehend that. Anything comes to be. Anything comes well, to be. Isn't that John 1 be. 1 as well? Yeah. <laughs> okay? My, my son actually asked Ted yesterday when I, when I meet God, I'm going to ask him how he was created. <laughs> like that because we don't get it he was just like I, I just don't understand no I said well the beginning he was there at the beginning right and he just I, I don't get it neither do I 
And so that's okay. You don't have to. That's right. That's where faith comes in. Exactly. Now, if sometimes you can just sit and dwell on that, if you can think, he was there when he spoke the earth into being and the stars and the planets. And Ron is so into space. Sometimes he'll go, look at this. <coughs> he has an app. We can go out in the sky and he'll point it here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Jupiter. Oh, that's this. Oh, that's that. that's that. Young no, that's allowed. that. He showed that to Young and Allowed. That's the feature of bear there. Right. Oh, that's how that's that fits so together. Cool. Well, they decided to put the Hubble telescope and just focus it in on this black spot for a week. And I go, that's such a waste of time. I know, I just want to see if there's, you know, so they did. Galaxy upon galaxy in the black spot. God created all that. We just, we have this little, little finite view of what's in the sky, and that's it. But there's so much more beyond. And then he loves So us. much more. And he, right. And why would you pick this we little, like this tiny small. planet of Earth and me on this little tiny planet of Earth that you even care about? Yes. That's in the exact perfect place in the solar system. Any closer we would burn, any further we would freeze. Right. Right. Jenny, I was on Facebook yesterday, and there was a little blurb there, and it showed a, a woman lying on <coughs> a, a beach, I guess. And it went from there to how many atoms it took to create that woman. And from there into smaller, space. Smaller, smaller. And to space, and to space, and to space. It's and unfathomable. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Now, don't just think of that. Think about he also was there, <coughs> breathed into life Adam, mm, the garden. Yes. All those people we read about in the Old Testament and through history, and now he's entered the grave. He's, he has seen you know, all. New Testament. We just think it's cool when we find pictures of our ancestors. <laughs> How about a picture of Adam? <laughs> he knows what he looked like. He knows what Eve looked like. He knows. He knows. He also knows who's going to be born and what they're going to be like. And he, he knows all that. He's the faithful and true at the beginning. Why does he need to tell the Laodicean church? But he's the beginning of the creation of God. Because they think they're it. They are they so wealthy. <laughs> we have money. Exactly. And rich. I need nothing. Oh, yes, you do. On you my way here, go. I'm thinking, let's just go back to Ephesus. Because, you know, what did uh, Kay say on the thing? She thinks that's the greatest problem of all the churches. Not this one. Mm -hmm. Ephesus. They'd lost their first love. They'd left it. Which is deliberate. Why? It's deliberate. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it means that they had it. They knew how they it had was. It. And they left it. And they left it. And this one, <clears throat> they don't need God. But what's the basis of everything <coughs> supposed to be the basis of everything love. that we do? Love. love. So they've traded love for Material wealth. I don't know, but pride's pretty high up there. They're like a big boo boos. Well, you know, look at material wealth though. If you don't need God, what is that? That's pride. Well, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh, I, I yeah. see what you're saying. Exactly. Sounds yes. And this is the one. Now he didn't say anything about anybody like that, but this is the one he wants to throw up you out of his mouth. Throw up. Right. Isn't that where we are? Right now? Oh, I was yeah. just talking to one lady in Finland. And I'm so happy it went to the Jesus that she asked me to talk to God about, you know, her moving here, his, her family, they want to come here. I said, honey, I think he would like to hear it from you. <laughs> and then I went that he really don't take any other place than the first place. And, exactly. And she's like, I know, I know. So I said, this is just awesome. That is so, so cool. Cool. So cool. And I thought it went there that, you know, when I became a <clears throat> Christian, the emptiness would came. And I told her there's nothing that can uh, uh, fill that place than God. Right. And right. then you feel but not these, perfect. These not people thought they did. They thought they filled it up and they were good. But that's why you're taking things and things after things. That's right. what I did. Right. You know. 
but after an hour, that, that thing was old already. A God, we never get That's old. Everything materially yeah. gets old. <coughs> so you looked up that word. Okay, look at that definition, and then you tell me what you got. It's on page 82. The word for beginning. So rule really of beginning first, right? Mm -hmm. He is the efficient cause of the creation. Now explain that. How can he cause creation? Which is the Greek word of what he was using. He was the beginning of creation for God. How does he cause creation? Because he's God. Because he said it. Right. So he causes it to come into being. He spoke the word. That's it. That's it. Which means he was in the beginning with God when God spoke our planet into being, our world into being. Now, what would the Pharisees have done with that? Well, they didn't call it him, but he was God. Right. Because they saw he was born to Mary. Exactly. Things, so. so that can't be. Right. So that's what did the Pharisees do? They crucified him. Yeah. Because that was blasphemous. But he's the faithful true witness. <coughs> so that can't be blasphemous. <coughs> that's got to be true because that's who he is. That's not what he does. Or That is who he is. Okay? Um, I was talking to my mom before. I think, I think we put too much emphasis on what we do. We forget it's more important who we are. Mm -hmm. Because who we are flows into what we do. But what we do means nothing unless who we are is right. Because it's a lot easier to do good works. Isn't it? Because then you can look back and go, I did mm -hmm. this, 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 and this. So then, whose credit is it? Mine. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not salvation. That's not the Christian life. Well, we went on our cruise. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. That didn't happen this week. <laughs> um, we made friends with this Jewish couple who <clears throat> their travel agents. And this cruise, the point of this cruise that we were going on is like to scout it out. You know, be the... You know, it was oh. all travel agents and bloggers, and, and there was a group of 35, 35 of us from the EO group mm. who were going to go to so we could take it back to our churches and cool. promote it as a, but they, they didn't understand, they were just going on it to test out the ship, you know, and we were going on it to test out the missional part of it, and they just, they're like, so you're just going down there just to help, blah, 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 and they, you know, because they, you know, they're very Jewish, we, uh, we, my mom and I, we had very extensive conversations with them awesome. about it, which was it got uncomfortable for a little bit, but then we just kind of, you know. I know. Yeah. yeah. Which but, could have been the whole purpose you were there. But it, what, what no. was funny was I, it really got canceled for a reason. That's right. Here, and here's what, you know, seeing God in it, this is how we saw God in it. One of, there's a retired pastor in our group who goes for a walk every morning at 5.30 in the morning. He was going for his walk at the hotel they had put us up in that night because we couldn't sail. They wouldn't let us on the ship. So they took us to Hylia Gardens, which is like 30 minutes outside of the city, and put us in a hotel there. And he met the owner of the hotel. And he started talking to him, found out that yesterday that hotel is being audited. They had 300 rooms they needed to fill. We got to fill them. We, 20 minutes later, they got the phone call from our cruise line asking if they had room for 300 people. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so wow. I said, that was the point of that all right there. So we can, you yeah. know, help out this hotel. Yes, it was right. buggy for us, but we saved this hotel from, it was a, like a, it was a Holiday Inn, but it was a, like a condemned Howard Johnson that they completely remodeled, but it's still struggling because of, this name and everything. It's a beautiful hotel now, so. It's so cool when we can look through God's eyes, and that's the reason that we look at it, instead of going, well, we what an inconvenience. Yeah. Like, that's, that's just coincidence. I'm like, no, okay. Yeah, not a, but, yeah, not okay. Well. <laughs> I don't no. think so. <laughs> um, I, was, I was also talking and thinking, again, you know, who we are instead of what we do. Um, just because this is where I am, my mother could go into the nursing home for my father. Nobody else can be his wife. No, nope, nobody. 
he won't recognize anybody else as his wife. This is Molly. He, he knew I'm Jenny. Who am I? His daughter. What did I do? Nothing. I, I do nothing. But nobody else can be that to him. Only me and only mom. That's, nobody else can be that. Why do we put so much emphasis on what we do? Who we are, it defines who we are. Should it define who we are? Yes. That's what the world is. It should not define who you are. What is the first question you, you, I don't mean you, but normally people ask, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. Yes. You know, when I first started staying home with um, my kids, which is what I wanted to do since I was 13, we were writing checks at the grocery store. So they say, okay, well, um, what is your work number? I don't have one. Oh, well, what do you do? I'm a kept woman. That's what I am. <laughs> My husband goes to work and he keeps me. Would you like his work number? So I give him his work number because I can't write a check because I don't have a job. So therefore that, you know, check is like demeaning, demeaning, demeaning. Now, moms of little children, sometimes you go to bed and you go, that was a useless day. My house looks like crap. The toys are everywhere. I'm exhausted. I've done nothing all day but keep them alive. And they're in bed now. So. Does that define who you are? No. That's just what you did today. You are their mom and nobody else can be that. Nobody. Nobody can quiet that little cry because they're hurting. Uh, you know, grandma's nice and maybe dad's nice, but nobody ain't. Nobody's mom. Nobody's mom. And if they need this, they need mom. Nobody else, they need that. Because of what you do? Sometimes it would be nice for somebody else. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Especially at 2.30 in the morning. Don't you want daddy right now? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, right? No. But then if they will stop to do that, that would hurt. <laughs> Yeah, see, because he can't be who you are. See, keep in mind who Jesus is. That's who he is. He can't be anything else. And we can't have anyone else be him. And we can't have anyone else be him. That's the more important thing. Because like you said, you think you're rich. But you're poor, blind, naked, and miserable. In him all things hold together. I can't do that. I can't, I don't even know why things hold together. Sometimes they look like they're all askew, and yet, he's got it all together. There's nothing that takes him by surprise, nothing that, oh, plan B. No, there's no plan B. This is it. Commendation. <sighs> Blankety blank blank and blank. Yeah, I didn't have zippity doo dah day. Blank. Hey, that's scary. That's just, you can't find anything, anything good at nothing, nothing, zero. I'm glad he left it for the last one. I'm glad he left that for the last church because who's reading this letter? All seven churches. Yeah, all seven churches are reading this. Keep in mind, that's their reputation. Everybody knows their reputation. Sardis. What do they have? They just had a small remnant. They had a remnant that he the, could say, but not the church. Up, but not the, church yeah. the church as a whole had no commendation whatsoever. What did the Lord commend in other churches? Okay, if we said... Um, Deeds, works, perseverance, and endurance. <coughs> Who's that? Ephesus. That's Ephesus. If we said you're being faithful in tribulation and poverty, who's that? Smyrna. Smyrna, Smyrna. the suffering Smyrna. church. Yes, yes. If you're holding fast Jesus' name in the midst of where Satan's throne was, who was that? That's Pergamum. That's Pergamum. Okay. Your love, your service, you're not holding to false teaching, not even knowing the deep things of Satan. Who is that? Thyatira. Right. You're keeping his word, and you're not denying his name. Who is that? 
Philadelphia. Okay. And then. And then. And then. We get a reproof. Why is being lukewarm so bad? You don't like fear. Right. Okay. There, there are people that are lukewarm. It's comfortable. It is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. Because hot can burn and cold can freeze and lukewarm is like... Yeah, but it doesn't do anything to you, though. It doesn't, it's not good for cooking. It's not good for cooling. It's not good for cleansing. It's, tolerance. It's tolerance. not good for anything. It's mm -hmm. tolerance. Right. Lukewarm is just not really good for anything except for yeast rising. Mm -hmm. Think, 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 think. Yeah, what if they have to get rid of the pasta? Yeast. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little yeast leavens the whole loaf. If you put too hot of water into yeast, it kills it. If you put cold water into yeast, it does nothing. It can't activate it. It has to be lukewarm, tepid, and then it starts activating. Boy, there's a visual in that. There's a huge... Yeast is a ne never a good thing in Scripture. Never. Why? What does it re represent? Sin. Sin. <coughs> Yeah, this church is lukewarm, so it made him want to spit them out of his mouth. He doesn't say that about any other church. They said they were rich, and they had need of nothing. That's their reputation. Why is that bad? Are the riches bad? Riches are not bad. The rich is not bad. That's what they were relying on. It was, a substitute. it was a substitute for what they were supposed to have, which was God. <coughs> they, they, they say they're rich, but they're really poor. Well, they're the richest city. They're the richest church. Now, think about those other churches that are suffering stuff. What do you think they might have been saying to themselves as they read that? They're wealthy and nobody has need of anything? Oh, where they be going? That's not fair. <laughs> you want to send some over here? <laughs> right. That's not fair. That's not fair. How come you have everything and we have nothing and well, we're suffering? Like, oh, I wish that was a problem I had. Exactly. Exactly. Until they read a little bit further, right? Mm -hmm. God wants to... You, oh, never mind. Never it's okay. Mind. If you're rich, it's all right. <laughs> what I thought before, you can have it. I don't, I don't want to be spewed out of God's mouth. It's okay. Think about the other church's attitudes towards Laodicea. What would Philadelphia's maybe uh, opinion been of them or concern? What are they known for? They're not giving love. love. Uh, they're known they're for not, love. They're not growing in God. They're That's growing it. in themselves. Right, right. They would have had that. Oh. Okay. Uh, Sardis, they've seen a problem with that? Probably not. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I think that's a good thing. They have lots of wealth. Because they're dead. Spiritual. I mean, that's like the whole idea with the Protestant work ethic. I mean, they were, they were living it. They worked really hard. They did really well. And so, clearly, I'm blessed. And I'm just exactly. living in my blessings. Exactly. And it, you know, and that's a very... <clears throat> and God does bless materially. But Where do we run into the problem? He expects a lot. Where do we start to we love it and we yes. don't share? And when we start to love it and put our confidence yeah. in that. I look at people, um, Gary Shanling just died. Mm -hmm. What did he have? Thyroid. Like, this man was rich. How come he didn't get diagnosed with the thyroid until it was like way out of whack and it was like, fuck, it can't help you. His money didn't help him, did it? Robin Williams commits suicide. This guy was rich. Rich, rich, rich. What does that tell you? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't, have so doesn't have anything to do with it. About that is that he made everybody laugh. And he was so depressed. Yes. Yeah. Which they will tell you most comedians, out of that suffering and stuff comes the comedy because that's the only way they can deal with it. And they use very often uh, drugs. That, and they use yeah. drugs, yeah. yes. He had Parkinson's. 
He said that, that that's, yes. he had yes. Parkinson's. Oh, really? Yes. And it, his symptoms were getting to the point where he couldn't conceal them anymore. Yeah. Oh, wow. I did not know Robin Williams had that. And yeah. he, I I mean, he had a big cocaine habit, too. Well, I know that. <laughs> he already also had a huge wine uh, what is that? addiction. No, no. Wine? Wine. Yes. Oh, a vineyard. What he couldn't sell. So actually, he was kind of, you know, in oh, maybe was in financial bankruptcy. bankruptcy. Yeah. <coughs> See, so it's what does that do? <coughs> it's all about the bottom line. It is. He's. It's kind of yeah. interesting. Uh, over the years, watching churches or being in churches, there's usually a group of people in, in any church that their main concern is, is debt. They want to pay the debt off. Right. And sit there, and they don't want to borrow any more money. Right. And usually those churches gradually die. And that's something. If you're willing to go out there and, stick and your neck trust stick the your Lord, neck out. it's just like our own church. Yes. We've got a pretty good debt because we have Lakeside. We have Lakeside. But we've got 500 people coming to church down there. Right. I know. Every time we go, it's like there's more, there's more, there's mm -hmm. more. Yeah. yeah. This mission field. And that was because we were willing to go in debt, but there were a lot of people that did not. Want did, to spend did agree that with money. that. Yeah. Please hear me. I am not saying money is bad. Money is not no, bad. No. But boy, when you put your trust in it, like the Laodicean mm -hmm. church did, they were so confident in all their wealth that they started <clears throat> not needing God. This was the warning that God did in Exodus to the people of Israel that came out of Egypt. They've been wandering 40 years. <clears throat> And now Joshua's getting ready to lead him into the promised land. And he said, don't forget me. When you get in and you go into houses you didn't build, you reap from vineyards you didn't plant, and you have wells you didn't dig, don't forget me. Could they have forgotten him out in the desert? No. No. He's the cloud by day and the fire by night. We don't even know where we're supposed to go unless that cloud gets up and we move. We exist because he lets us exist out here in the desert. Also, but they're, like, they're, they're, they're food daily and food, water. every single day, and water. But then when you get into Israel and the promised it. land, yeah. what's he know is going to happen? You're going to forget me. He's like, we don't need you so much anymore. <clears throat> but it's a heart condition. Money cannot it is a you. heart condition. Boy, once yeah, you have that daily feeding of God and then you don't have it you can go back and go oh I'm getting so angry and discontented about this why is that because you're not feeding feeding what you need to feed and you're neglecting that and so you're not depending on him anymore and all these little things start getting to you and it's like it's amazing when you start, you know, when you start tithing and like the Bible says, give your 10%. For a lot of people, that 10% is a crazy amount of money yeah. and it seems hard to do. But like once you start doing it, Bless holy you cow. Yes. It's amazing. Because he is like a faithful and people. true really witness. What he says will happen will happen. Jenny, I've been listening to uh, David Jeremiah every day and he's talking um He's teaching in the book of Ruth, and, yes. and almost yes. every time he emphasizes the fact that Naomi and her family went out full. Full, and they came full. back empty. They came back empty. Yeah. Right. Right. Totally. Don't call me Naomi, call me yeah. Mara. Yeah. And only things, but everything. 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 Yeah. everything. All the wealth they had, not only the wealth, but the, but the men, yeah. the they're all, the all gone. They were all, all gone. gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's like a comfort too, because that was the thing that struck me with the witness being, mar you know, coming from the word martyr, like martyr. Yes. It's it's, 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 an, uh, it's it's willing to stake comfort mm -hmm. in, yeah. in staking your life to the point of violent death. Yeah. You know, that is what a martyr is. When you're violent yeah, death. And, I mean, you know, when it's 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 one of those things that's hard to figure out because when I'm in the word, I never feel comfortable. I know, and, and so sometimes it's easy to put away the word because it's, it's really, making me feel uncomfortable. Really, it's really a lot more comforting to not 
Sometimes I come away with more questions than I got. Well, you do, and I don't, you know, and I, you get uncomfortable with yourself and the decisions you're making, and, and when you're comfortable, sometimes that makes me uneasy because I think, geez, am I not doing what's right? Mm -hmm. And um, anyways, but like the idea of like giving money so I can see God work tenfold, but it's not always the way where it's like you work tenfold so you feel more comfortable to give more money. It's usually good, good. living in a, le a level of fire on your butt makes you, for lack of better terms, usually anything I say, but you know, that is true. Though. More willing to and more attentive to what's going on. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, they were poor, wretched, miserable, blind, and naked. I mean, boy, he does he have a description for them. And they're not, not good, not good, not good, not good. Colossians 2, wealth comes from the full assurance of understanding resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. So what brings them wealth? Christ. And, and so it is a heart condition. What the make it? Really didn't mean that they didn't have clothes. No, that was the, they not at all. They would be ashamed because they didn't. They didn't have his uh, righteous yeah. clothing. Right. Let's get into that. Um, the reproof of the other churches. <coughs> Think about that now. Ephesus left and abandoned their love. Okay. Not not too bad, except again, that's that's the worst. Pergamum. Some had held to false teaching. Not all. Remember, never all except Laodicea. By a tyrant, most have been led astray to immorality and held to false. Most, not all, not all. Sardis is dead and their deeds were not complete, but there was a remnant mm -hmm. that was not holding to that false teaching. Only Smyrna and Philadelphia. And what were these churches in? Tribulation. <laughs> okay, there's no reproof given to them. None whatsoever. And they're in tribulation, but they're not cursing God. They were they're poor. They were fast. They were poor, <coughs> they were rich. They were, that's right. That's they were rich. Opposite of <clears throat> Now, I want us to understand what it meant when he said he's outside the door knocking. People um, use this as an evangelistic tool, right? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone lets me in, which is true, which is true. In context of Revelation, is that what he's saying? No. Not to the individual. He said it to the church. I'm, I'm standing to the church. Supposed believers. Now, that's a whole different thing to get your head around. This is Jesus who's supposed to be the head of the church, knocking on the church door to see if he can come in. Will you let me in? What do you mean let you in? You know, this is the church, yeah. I have nothing to do with this church, nothing. I'm not even in there. There's no handle, because it has to be open from the inside. This is an artist's rendering. And there's, um, again, from David Jeremiah, I had to go back and find out who this guy was, an artist, and what is he talking about. There's no handle on the door. Vines are growing all over it, but he's holding what? Light. Because he is the light. the light, right? And he's knocking. There's no handle because he's not going to open and go in. He has to be invited in to the church. See, that's the scary thing to me. I'm like, what do we have to be very, very careful of? in our church. Well, we see all of those church and the inside the church itself. Right. What do we want to see so in we our church? Stand fast and be careful. Stand fast and be careful. What does our vision need to be? On Jesus himself. On, On Jesus him. himself. What do I want to hear from that pulpit? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Not, um, you know, let me show you this film and then I'm going to show you how that applies to your life. I don't, I don't care about that. I want to know what did the word say in this certain book and how does that apply to my life? And how is that going to make me different throughout the week? So that when I come back Sunday, I'm going to get built upon that. You know, okay, now I, I know this truth and I've I've been trying to live that out, and that's been really cool this week. Let's add on another truth. 
So that's, that's what I want. I don't want to know, this is the program here, and this is the program there, and this is what we have to offer your children. Is that important? It is, it is important. It is important, and it's important that you have people serving in those programs because we have spiritual gifts, so we have to exercise them. And we are going to be ministering to the body and people coming in. That's important, but what's our focus have to be? Jesus, 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 Jesus. The word, the word, the word. If that is not our focus and the reason for what we do things, because what did Ephesus lose? They left their first love. But they had great stuff. They did, but not for the right reason. So when you want to go serve, you want to go do this, what's my motive? Love and acting in my spiritual gift or, well, that sounds like a really good thing to do. Uh, that's how I'll occupy my time. No. We've got to get that focus, focus, focus. And that is a good thing to examine yourself by. What am I, why am I doing this? Why do I want to do this? Because this is a good thing. Well, that's nice. Is this what you're called to do? Is this what God wants you to do? How are you going to know that? You have to go to him in prayer. Prayer number one. You, know, you need to know the word. You need to know the word. Right. Um, the will of God is not a mystery. But I look at these doors, and it's like, or one, two, or three. So, you know, it's like the game. Which one do I pick? <laughs> well, let's go through this one. Is this the right one? Is this the grand prize? Huh? I don't know. What if it doesn't open? And there's no whammy. Like, you, you know, that was the other thing is people, have, I, and that was something I've struggled with. You know, what if God is trying to, maybe he's not going to hand you a snake, you know? Right, right. How do you know he's not going to hand you a snake? Because he's a good father. Because he's a good, good father. That's not his character. You know, I grew up in a missionary-based church. It's like, what if God sends me to Africa? <laughs> I can't live in Africa! I said nothing but Thailand. <laughs> Do you know, I have friends that have been missionaries in Africa, and they're the happiest people Thailand. in the entire world. I love being in their space. I love, 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 love them. They love, love, love me. God left me here to minister to them. They're more spiritual because they're in Africa. No. God has a different thing for you to do. And they were completely happy going to Africa. I will tell you that Lisa prayed to come home for a year. And cried herself to sleep for a year the first time she was there. The first year she was there. Doug, take me home. Doug, take me home. Doug, take me home. Doug, take me home. I can't take it. Doug, take me home. Take me home. For a year. Where God calls you is not always easy. Mm -hmm. But he will sustain you through it. Mm -hmm. And now she can't imagine living anyplace else. Mm -hmm. But this is a city girl put it in the bush. No running water, no electricity. Mm -hmm. People spoke Swahili. And she had a baby. Cheers. Okay? But God sustained her. <clears throat> God has brought them so so many different things, and he's just used, 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 used. They wouldn't want to be any place else. So he's not going to hand you a snake, because that's not who he is. That's just not who he is. It's, there is a faithfulness in this true witness that he said, I am working all things out for your good. Jenny, I think, too, we as, as women in the church, have to be ever so careful, especially we who are wives and mothers, that we keep our eyes on him. Yes. Um, and don't look at everybody else. Well, you know, I have these these three little kids and and I am bogged down here and I, all I can do is is keep these kids and my family and my house. Right. And, and my parents, and et cetera, et cetera. While this one over here is serving the Lord in the church. Right. He, she's teaching. She's uh, going here. She's going there. Why can't? Her life's mattering. Her life matters, yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. But I'm having to stay home, and I'm having to 
clean the toilets and I'm having to change these diapers that are constant, Lord. <laughs> right. Right. You're called for that. You're called to that, and, and um, bless Dobson's heart. He was the one that continued. I listened to him every single day. It was constant confirmation. This is the most important job on the planet. Yeah. That you are there with your child and you're raising up this healthy human being. This human being that has confidence in who they are, that they're loved, this is home, this is a safe place, and they have a stable environment, which I'm telling you now, does not happen in this, in this, in this world. It does not happen. It just doesn't. That's huge. And now I'm on the other side of raising those kids. And you've got, oh God, boy, you're using that one in here, and you're using this one here, and using this one, and you're forming this one up here to be a That's so cool. Um, how do you get that relationship with your kids? Quality time or quantity time? Quality time. Both. Both. Yeah. Both. Both. And I would tell you that the quantity outweighs the quality. Because you're there day in, day out, the good, the bad, the fun, the not so fun, the I don't even want to be around you kind of time. You <laughs> live through all that. That teaches them how we deal with this and this and this and this. I don't even like you, I still love you, but I don't like you today. <laughs> this is life. When you get into the workplace, when you get into the world, there are going to be people you don't like. But you still have to love them. You still have to work with them. You still have to exist with them. And you still have to show Jesus, the faithful and true witness, to them. How do we do that? Boy, you learn that in the home first. Because that's the hardest place. You live with them. People like out there, you can leave them. Work, you can leave them. You go home to these people. That's huge. That is huge. Now, let's go back to this. When you get to cross-references, this was hard. True child of God. What did you find out when you looked up true child of God? Because that was in page 83 of your homework. Number seven says, can a person be a member of a church and not be a true child of God? Look up the following verses and write down your insights. Face yourselves. <sighs> okay. Yes. Second Corinthians 13. Oh, test that's yourself. See I was the waiting face. for the test coming, you know. So, <laughs> can I take this test to so get 100? <laughs> Please give me the test so I can yeah. ask you. Yeah. Give it to me and grade it. How do you test yourself? This is the rubber meets the road. How do you test yourself? How can you do that? Test yourself to see if you're the best. against Christ. There you go. And your motive. <clears throat> the good right? question is always, what would Jesus do? That's it. And the motive. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Why am I doing that? Because it's going to make me look better and this is the right thing to do. Okay, that's good. What's your motive, heart, condition? This is this a good thing to do? This is what Jesus would do. What's my motive? Love the for motive that person? That he would be happy. That's, that's, that's more he would be happy. Yes. Everything would, would Jesus be happy with me if I did that? Yeah. Yes. Am I looking out for that person's soul? Yes. It's got to be yes. yes. That's got to be, why do I pray for that person? Why do you think I'm enduring this rough relationship that I don't really like to be in? But I may be the only truth these people see, so I got to, what's your motive? It better be concern for their soul, concern for love. That's Bottom line, Ephesus. Bottom line's got to be your first love. And remember that God loves them, everybody. Mm -hmm. the same yes. Things than you. He them in That's his image. it. He created them in his image yes. just like he created the you. The sun is shining for everybody. Everybody. Good. And I also always look back. Have I grown? Have I grown? Have I grown? Am I the same person there? Is the same stuff bother me? It's always but Or have I grown? I'm like, that doesn't get to me so much anymore and this thing I thought was so important is not so important anymore because God showed me that mm, that's you growing in faith that's what you want First John 2 19 this is hard this is hard where did you find out about this one they did not overflow us 
And what does that mean? Because you know, God told them, hold fast, hold fast, hold fast to what you have, hold it. What does that mean? They know his words, but they didn't right. choose to live by it. Right. One time? No. And it just, you know, it gives them over to their desires sometimes. That's, That's what Romans tells us. Right. Okay? And remember, First John says that it's a habit of life. It's not something they do and then they repent. Or they, because we all sin. We all sin. But that is, if this is someone's habit of life, they continue, continue, continue. This is their character. Oh, boy. If this is their character and they're okay with that, let's go back to salvation. Let's go back and go, tell me about your salvation experience. How did you come to the Lord? And what's happened to you since then to now? How have you grown? What's your church life been like? What, you know, what are your friends? Okay. If they had remained with us, what does that mean? Their focus was on Christ. Good. Good. Their focus remained with us, the body of Christ. The church. You can't go from hating us to then, oh, oh, I'm in trouble. Can you right. Help me? Right. And then that back parents again. And <laughs> go you away. can't do, no. And then <laughs> it's not a, uh, Christianity is not an on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again. It, it's not that. It, 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 then it's not real. Some people have to start with something. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle of continuing to surrender to what God wants you to do, whether that's your plan or not. That's why the Ephesus problem was so big. They left yes. That. That's why the Ephesus they problem was so big. Yes. They left that. They did the right things, but not for the right reason. And this is where the Antichrists come from, which I yes, found very interesting. That's a good point. The, the, yeah. And, but that's why they're the Antichrist, because they were seen as being of the church. They were. They were. And deceived. They deceived, deceived, deceived. They yeah. Weren't. Good point. Really good point. Matthew. Mm. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Have you ever seen a wolf get in the middle of a, shep of a, of a herd of sheep? Ah! There's panic. There's just total panic. Because they know he's bad, he's bad, he's bad, he's bad. He's gonna kill me. Yeah, that's because that's what wolves do. But they're in sheep's clothing. So they look like a sheep and they act like a sheep. Mm -hmm. They aren't a sheep. They are not a sheep. They are far from a sheep. They're not good in following the shepherd like a true sheep. <laughs> mm. And also the tree, not good fruit, come down. And the tree with the bad, a, a good tree produces good fruit. It can't produce bad fruit. But a bad tree can't produce good fruit. It can't do it. But it can look good on the outside. It sure can. And the fruit looks good and you open it up and it's just... It's the strawberry doesn't taste any good. That exactly. That's what I always think of as the orange. The like, orange. Oh, exactly. I can't wait to open this and you open it and it's like all dried and I'm like, oh. Yeah, there's the, the Osage oranges. Have you heard of the Osage mm -hmm. oranges? We have one on the ranch and it was like my dad's favorite like thing to do if I brought a boy down so like he would like if it was like somebody I was dating for a while the first thing was the shotgun and then the second thing was, <laughs> was the orange <laughs> was the Osage orange so we have this tree and it's beautiful it's in the middle of this oak hammock and it's like picturesque and there's always the most beautiful fruit like all over it just in the middle so he would drive the thing, drive the car down blah, 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 in the middle of that thing and then he would say oh look at this gorgeous tree yeah, we have these wild orange trees. Why don't you go and grab one? You can have one. So they'd get it, they'd eat it, and it tastes like just the worst mm -hmm. thing you could ever, like, it, I The mean, fruit even looks good. The fruit look, is beautiful. Wow. Be, and because not, no animals touch it. <laughs> and they know not to touch <laughs> like, it. Like, it's just gorgeous. And I mean, packed full of these beautiful oranges. And we have some, like, wild tangerine trees from probably when we ate tangerines and set them out. <laughs> But they would have this one, and it's the most bitter, vile taste you'll ever have Isn't in your mouth. The Osage so orange. <laughs> but like, you know, if squirrels don't eat it, <laughs> then it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't know that verse, Lord, Lord? But I will say to you, I never knew you. <coughs> Depart from me. I, I never knew you. This was Laodicea. 
that describes them perfectly. That must be my, I go back and do that all the time now. No, from, I know I'm safe. Like Chuck said, I know and I know and exactly. I know. But you know, the But that's the world. testing your faith. That's, that's going back the and world. examining yourself. That's the knowing world. you're supposed to do that. You are supposed to do that. Now, Revelation 3, 18, what's their solution? I refined gold from him, from his him. white garments. Yeah, so I thought, okay, I'm going to look up the word buy, and it's going to give me a really great spiritual meaning. You know what buy means? Buy. Purchase. <laughs> I'm like, that can't be. That's buy. not true. That's not what it means. Right. This is a spiritual book. This is a spiritual letter. Everything they're dealing with is spiritual. I keep trying to put it on my earthly plane. This is not what it means. So therefore, I had to, you know, check my interpretation with my dangerous pastor. So, they needed to buy from him gold refined by fire, white garments to clothe their nakedness, and I sat. Now, we already said they were known for their black wool, which does what? Clothes you. They were known for their eye salve, which was healing for their eyes, okay? Well, people bought that from them. So they're like, why don't we need to buy eye salve and garments? And, and gold refined by fire? We're the richest city, okay? Because He's touching them right where they were. This is not material. He's not talking about material. He's talking spiritually. So how do you buy gold refined by fire from God? How do you buy white garments from God? By becoming saved. I thought it was funny because they were known for their black wool. Isn't that funny? Yes. Not white. <laughs> I circled black. it in my black. Like they were known for their yeah. black wool, but <laughs> it's probably they were or black inside. And black was rare. Black was rare, and that, that's kind of treasure, too, because it was rare. It was glossy and, and soft. Was, and there you go. It was pretty. And I wanted to read um, my dangerous pastor's answer. Because, again, if I interpret something, I always want to make sure it's with what he says. Okay, let me make sure all this. The, the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Now, you know that because that's in Revelation. So we knew the white garments represents the white. Okay, that one I got. The gold refined by fire. I was like, mm. well, gold refined by fire. I was like... That's like going back to Matthew, though, where yes. it says the chaff will be burned up That's and only it. the pure will remain. That's it, which is what they do with the gold, and they continue right. to, yeah. you know, but how do I the buy it from him? How do I buy, purchase that from him? Uh, I can't remember what it was, but we brought something back from Venezuela, and it looked like it was gold. It looked it, like it. It might be worth something. And we took it to the jeweler, <laughs> and... He said, well, let me check it out. He went back, and he had a torch, and it turned out it was not gold. <laughs> you were robbed. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Um, this is what Chuck says. <coughs> also remember that he is addressing a lukewarm church. So he also would add Philippians 2.12, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Great point. Uh, he tells us Laodicea was a very wealthy city, all that kind of stuff. We knew that. So what Jesus is saying here is, I know you are materially rich, but you are spiritually poor, blind, naked. So seek riches from me, spiritual riches, and you will be rich in the things of God in spiritual clothes and spiritual sight. We do that not just by salvation, but also by seeking him daily and living for him, daily working out our salvation. Okay? Because the, the only thing I could come up with is, how do I buy gold refined by fire? What happens when I get saved? What do I pay with? Your life. My life. My life. I surrender my life. To what he wants, then he refines me by fire, by trials and tribulations. Yes. yes. No, we don't preach salvation like that, do we? <laughs> Come to Jesus, and your life will be so much better. That's true. That is absolutely true. But you're going to be tried by fire. We never tell them that. Warning. Spoiler alert. It's going to get bad. <laughs> I promise. 
Because if you're a Christian in the world, it's going to get bad. He disciplines those who he loves. He disciplines those who he loves. Thank you. Okay? But Jesus is with you through them all, which makes you be able to endure all that. There's no emptiness anymore. You're going to have that trial whether you're saved or not. But you have to know you can't rely on yourself. You cannot. And that's what gives you the strength to go through the trial. What do you do if you don't have God? They've gone through acts of God. They went through those earthquakes. They did. Exactly. Exactly. They're like, I can do it. <laughs> do you see ah. the spiritual stuff here? Do you spirit see the fine linen? Righteous acts of God. Okay. The eye salve. How do you understand the truth of God? Your eyes have to be opened. Who opens your eyes? God's Indwelling Holy Spirit, right? That's why I think some people can read the word and go, I don't, it just doesn't speak to me. No, it doesn't. You have to have the author inside to speak. And yet the word has power in itself. It brings you to salvation. Isaiah 48.10, this is also how I got that. I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Well, how many churches did that apply to? Yeah. Each church just dealt with it a little bit differently. And if they weren't in tribulation now, they were headed to it. Because, you know, Christianity is good, and then Christianity gets against the law. And then Christianity is good, and then Christianity is against the law. So it's just going to circle around somewhere else. So right now, maybe you're not in tribulation, but you will be. You will be. Because that's the way it is. I have refined you. You may be in the fire right now. What are your righteous deeds? Can you look back and go, I didn't take the bait. Somebody, and I didn't take the bait. I just went, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who enabled me to do that? That's not my flesh, I'm going to tell you that. Flesh defends, right? Mm -mm. Not, not in love. Christ doesn't do that. Again, look back. Do you base your worth on what you do or who you are in Christ? Only the deeds done for Christ will last, which means, what's your motive? You've got to be done in love. You've got to be done in love instead of, well, this is the right thing to do, so I just want to do. I've done stuff like that. I do it just because it's the right thing to do. Right thing based on what? On God's word, so that's why I do it. Why? So that's what I have to do because I'm a Christian. <laughs> right? Because knowing what's right to do and not doing it is a sin. James 4.17. Right? So, that's not how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live with, oh, I want to honor this person more than me, so let me do that. That's okay. You do that. You get in the grocery line, and there's this, I got my cart. You know, there's this guy in the back of me with one thing, hey, hey, go through, you know, fine. Isn't that great when people do that to you? Like, I gotta go, I just got this one thing, can't I find a line? Hey, why don't you, well, thank God, yes, thank you, let me get in, get out. Love it. Reciprocate. You know, the world wants to call it, pay it forward. Christians have had a, have had a line on this forever. This is why we do what we do, because we're supposed to be Jesus to these people in the hopes that they'll go, wow, that's so nice. Why is that? Let Opening. Tell Let me tell you about Jesus. That's, mm -hmm. there you go. See, it was what you guys did in the hotel. Oh, no, this is, I think this is why this happened. Why? Because you have a spiritual plane and not physical. Mm -hmm. This is, this I think is what happened because God is in control of it all, so therefore my outlook is a little different. I'm looking at it as God's story writing instead of, this is an inconvenience, I can't believe this happened. Isn't that lucky? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not lucky. <laughs> There's no such thing as luck. God's sovereignty and plan, yes. Luck, no, not so much. So there's not a remnant in this church? I don't see one. Well, they said there were people there, but they were falling asleep. And I always took that, that there, was, there were people who probably were Christians who came in, but they weren't encouraged. In they said, they said, wake up. Like, there is a few, I don't know. 
No, it's not in this one. Like was this the one that they said wake up? Not no. in this one. Oh, no. see, like, this is what happens when I read two at the same time. <laughs> As I know. I would do that if I did two at the same time. There's nothing. I Absolutely. want you to There's look. Oh, that's right. That was the other one. Therefore, Last question. Back. That's it. Why? Why does he say those who I love are that proven discipline, yeah. therefore be zealous and repent? Why does he say that? What's that, that? Sardis? Is that him? Because he still loves them. He still loves them. That's the point. They're, they're lost, but he still loves them. He still, he still stands there. It's not, oh, I don't want to be around those people. They need Jesus just like you needed Jesus. Knock, so, knock, knock. Jenny, through the study as we were kind of chasing Laodicea, um, I did some research into history and into the letter because if you go to Colossians yeah that letter is not in scripture Paul, but wait Paul instructs them to read his letter that he was also to, to Laodicea yeah. right and look for the letter coming from Laodicea which some people that letter is actually it's not in scripture it's, it's in the scripture. Apocrypha and I read it um, what did it say Paul's letter to, no, from Laodicea. From Laodicea. To the, the letter that exists from Laodicea, most scholars think is a forgery. Oh, really? That somebody wrote it saying it was in Paul's name, and there's no, because it's, it's there's no Greek. Oh, that one. It, it doesn't show up in the Greek. No. What they really think was that Paul happened to be going through Laodicea and actually wrote the letter to Ephesians from Laodicea really? is what they're thinking. So that letter that he's referencing is okay. possibly the letter written to the Ephesians. Do you know what um, what year? 30s? Um, no. 60 to 62. His, right. his comment of read this letter to the Laodiceans was the 60 to 62, which is exactly when the earthquakes were exactly. hitting. Exactly. Right. And they were so independent and so wealthy, they, they refused right back the up. Roman government help. Yeah. Right, and they built their city back up. Themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Totally I did dependent that. on their own wealth. Which then makes sense why he says, remember the Laodiceans, because they had just gone through a massive earthquake. Yes. Exactly. He was very concerned exactly. for them, and probably for the fact that they were trying to do everything on their own. On their own. Because they wanted to be free. Isn't that something? Because I went back and started putting timelines together because I got yeah. really <laughs> curious. I got I like, <laughs> yeah. And how long until this letter was 30 years? So around 30 years before John wrote this letter yes. to Laodicea. Which, yeah, which that was six made total sense that they yeah. had managed to rebuild their own city themselves. And how, how long would that more take? confident did you become in yourself? And they, and and they the had banks ten were there. years before the earthquake. They had just gotten their freedom from Rome. Right. They had just gotten known as a free city. Yeah. Okay. Can you relate that to the church today? Can you relate that to America? That's what yeah, I'm saying. I think so. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And especially in an election year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. We are so many trillion dollars in debt. Oh. That is going to come around to have a crash. We cannot exist like that. What's the American people think that can't happen to us, <laughs> right? Just like 9-11 can't happen to us. I know. And again, you know, when you have your little chart um, and you're putting it in the church timeline, church history timeline thing up here at the top, he said, uh, David Jeremiah says Laodicea is the church in the last days. They're self-reliant. They don't need God. He's on the outside, you know, coming in. I'm like, boy, sure looks like a lot of church is like. So I encourage you, and we only have two more weeks left. You do day four and five for Thursday. And then we have lesson ten, which we finally get to go to the overcomers. <laughs> what does all that mean? <laughs> Why does it say you can do this and you can do oh, I don't know, but in lesson ten, right? All our questions will be answered. But they don't have the whole summer to chase after all you're you. You're just full Rabbits. of just, just <laughs> encouragement. But there's no way all your answers are going to be bad. Be and you know, you're going to have lots of questions. <laughs> and they're going to leave you for the summer. <laughs> Go chase them. Um, Would you give us an update on your health before you leave? Thank you. Um, I am right now waiting for medication to be approved. Mm -hmm. That's where I am, because um, they want to put me on a different medication that has to be um, 
you have to go through this treatment, this treatment, this treatment before you're qualified for this treatment, and I have. I have gone through that. But uh, my doctor actually has to sit down with the insurance doctor to say oh. that she has qualified because she did this, 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 and this, so insurance needs to approve it because of this. So that's where I stand. Um, the and other medication supposed that's to supposed to be delivered should be delivered today. Side effects can go from anywhere from nothing to, to blood clots, to fatigue, to nausea, to vomiting, to yeah. rash, to, <laughs> yeah. they're all possible. They're the, every medication I've taken, it's all possible. But I haven't experienced that with any of them, so that's a good thing. That's a good track record. Um, and it's supposed to be for eight weeks once a week, uh, eight weeks once every other week, and then once a month. That's, that's the protocol right now. What we are asking for prayer for is direction. Is this what we're supposed to do? Um, is, is this really the treatment I'm supposed to do? And again, that's the doors for me. Is the door being open or is it continually being blocked, block, 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 block? If it's block, 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 that's going. Maybe when you stand back and go, maybe that's not it. But I don't want to kick in a door that God continues to, to shut, shut, shut. And what's this medication? For multiple myeloma. Well, I know that, but like, is it for, is it, is it like another type of cancer? Like a, it's a chemo. Just a type of chemo. Okay. It's a chemo to get my numbers back down. Okay. Interesting, Melody, who sits back here, her mother was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. She has fallen away from the Lord. She's in Texas getting ready to go through a stem cell transplant, so she wants to talk to somebody. She wants her mom to talk to somebody. You're like, what are the odds of that? Seriously, what are the odds of that? It's just amazing. And, and then uh, a girl in choir came up to me and said her husband knows this guy at work and he's going through, getting ready to go through a stem cell transplant for myeloma, blah, 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 he doesn't know the Lord. You know, and I'm like, that's really the one I want to talk to. You know, how are you going to get through this with whatever? And I can only share from being a Christian going through that. You know, um, she said she wanted him to tell him to, oh, you know, you just have to praise the Lord through it. I'm like, he cannot praise someone he does not know. He cannot trust in someone whose character he does not know. That's, that's not going to happen. That's putting the world on your page with Scripture. They don't read it. It's blank nothing there so to be able to talk to this man about Christ maybe that's the whole reason he's got my mama I don't know but pray that the doors would open up to share with this man Brent, Brenner, Bernard no, something like that is his name I don't know Melody's mom's name that I don't know and Bridget either the baby's coming this week or the baby's coming next week so, she's she's on vacation. She's so, so she ready. Does not need to come this week. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll pray that it comes yeah, as soon as she gets home from vacation. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Anybody got? Need to add? No? Yes. All right. See you next week. No tape. No tape because we only did half. <laughs>